Hi lads and lasses, Modus Pelican here with GTA San Andreas. If you enjoy this video, please start an OnlyFans account, but instead of sharing nudes, just share photos of pelicans in helmets, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. I'm going to miss seeing this loading screen picture of a good Christian lady licking lipstick off her teeth. We spawn in, and I'm still dressed like OG CJ with his iconic white singlet tucked into his undies combination. He would get teased more about it, but you know, this is a guy who carries around an M4, an RPG, several Uzis, explosives, and a chainsaw, all neatly tucked into his pockets so people think twice. Today we are going to try to hunt down Big Smoke, a former member of our gang who betrayed us so that he could get rich selling drugs. We've all been there. We also need to kill Officer Tenpenny, a corrupt cop who's been blackmailing CJ and recently tried to have us killed. Attempted murder can really soil a relationship. This cop proceeds to get mad at me for I guess appreciating some low resolution booty, so I do the mature thing and savagely beat him to death. Only in San Andreas can you kill a cop and remain on a one star wanted level. It's like, hey police chief, should we send in support units? This guy is literally murdering our officers in broad daylight. And he's like, yeah nah mate, he's probably just having a rough day, get him a Snickers. Anyway, we need to throw on our gang colors, otherwise what's the point? A dollar sign chain to show that we don't even attempt to hide our awkward public erections. A green fedora, just kidding, I don't want people to think I have sex with a different beautiful woman every night. A three quarter length green shorts with my favorite socks and sandals as footwear. All brought together with a white t-shirt and a cap because the UV rays are harsh in California and sun safety is gangster. Let's go. The timing of this actually couldn't be better, as a few days ago we looked at the green versus purple alien war currently happening on GTA 5 servers. But this is where it all really started. The green Grove Street families versus the purple ballers. Our gang is on the back foot at the moment, but we're doing our best to take back as many hoods as possible. A big smoke is hiding somewhere in the city, but if we can control enough of it, we'll find him. This is also a pretty special moment for my channel, as this will be the last GTA San Andreas video. You know how Netflix leaves every episode on a cliffhanger to make sure we watch the next one and see what happens? Well I do that with my content, but usually never actually finish the series, it's bloody genius marketing mate. Today that changes though, and I'm both happy and sad about this, as this is my favourite game of all time, and I want to say thank you legends for the support. Especially on a 16 year old game. Some of the episodes have amassed over 1 million views which warms my cold black heart. Alright, enough monotone emotion, let's take care of these busters. I wanted to get a cinematic shot of me pulling into the driveway of my mansion. But as I went to do a U-turn, I drove my car off a cliff and then it exploded and in this game you can't insure cars. Fuck my life. Looks like we're back on the bike. And I must say, it's actually pretty appropriate given CJ is back in the hood like it's the first mission. The problem is, the only kind of person worse than Kim Jong-un is a cyclist, but no matter how many times you try to kill either of them, they always bounce back. I meet up with the crew, and they're all watching Shrek hentai, which is pretty cute, but then the news comes on and Tenpenny is having his court trial. Due to systemic corruption, he is set free serving no jail time. As a result, the entire city goes into a complete riot. Ain't nobody gonna be riding in my hood. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This game makes me feel so white. Like seriously, I'm so white that I'm about to bring a gun to a school. A nail gun and some other tools so I can fix the bookshelves because reading expands the adolescent mind. So yeah, Los Santos is in a full blown riot, it's absolutely popping off. There are people looting TVs and fighting each other. For some reason this hooker thinks it's a good idea to shoot a bunch of my Grove Street homies. I must say she does way better than I would have hoped. Four of my guys couldn't take her down. We might have to pencil in some shooting lessons I guess. Cop cars are being torched and Sweet wants to just go back to Grove Street and secure the block. I give him a ride and hear that incredible mission complete sound play out. I wish that song played in real life every time I came. I decide I better check in with my girlfriend and see how she's coping with this whole city rioting. She's a real emotional rock for me and the love of my life. 
Unfortunately, I'm a slave for publicity as I want to be famous so I do what has to be done and murder her. I mean, it worked for Carol Baskin, so why not me? She's so well known. Killing your spouse is free real estate. All right, time to get our hands dirty. What up? We almost got the hood under control, man. Before we handle the Grove Street problem, I'm in debt and owe a favor to Caesar, the leader of the Los Aztecas, another gang. He's dating my sister and has helped me significantly, so I'll help him out. As we're about to leave, a homeless guy pulls me from the driver's seat and wants to brawl. Now I'm not saying I have the perfect solution to the homeless problem, but I mean it is a solution. Wow, I'm kidding. I sometimes buy homeless people lunch in real life and then just chat with them, it's really wholesome. And then I stab them. Wow, sorry, I can't help myself. I meet Caesar's gang. Nice baby blue bandanas, no wonder you're struggling to control your territory. You look like you're about to drop the hottest Mathletics hip hop track of 1992. Anyway, Caesar and his boys are in a savage gang war with the Los Santos Vargos, these yellow guys. There are so many gangs in this game. I'd love to see the next GTA have gang warfare like this. Back when I played as a kid, I learned a lot from gang warfare. Like whenever we took a new hood so we could push more crack as demand was rising, I realized it was the core economic principle of the market equilibrium. That being said, when I tilted the camera to try and watch CJ getting some, it taught me sex wrong as they just casually sat next to each other. The school bus trips were never the same for me. With my debt repaid to Caesar, it's time to take back the city so we can find out where Big Smoke is hiding. A Big Sexy here seems to have forgotten that we're actually allied with these guys and then he just nonchalantly waves at them. You're sending mixed messages there, Chief. So it's time to take back some hoods, which means a lot of gang wars. This is highly illegal, sort of like when my neighbors were in that sex tape. Of course they didn't actually know they were in a sex tape, I just filmed it from a nearby tree. And look, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but it had exceptional cinematography. The process of initiating a turf war is just walking into that area and then shooting a few of the opposing gangsters. Three waves of reinforcements will come to try to stop you, but unfortunately for them, I have a military grade M4 assault rifle. The more rivals you take down, the more friendlies you can recruit and soon you will have a small army following you around. Of course, as we established earlier, they're not the smartest in Los Santos, but they offer much needed emotional support. Imagine you're in the middle of fighting over a hood and some well-dressed malacca pulls out a sniper rifle. You'd be like, hey bro, isn't there some sort of unspoken rule that we use gangster weapons only? Like Glocks, Tech 9s and AK-47s? And hold them all thug-like on an angle? You're just a filthy hardscoper. Eventually, we manage to take back enough territory and I get the call from Sweet that he knows where Big Smoke is hiding. Let's go. Geez, the homeless have had a really tough time today. I mean, he just got tag teamed by a hoe and a Foot Locker employee. It's time to get ready as this will be a massive fight. I stock up on ammunition. To be precise, I buy 1,365 fragmentation grenades because there's no such thing as too many explosives. I test them and they work great. I'm sure you guys can relate that it's incredibly embarrassing when you buy frag grenades in real life and they don't work. This lands me a four star wanted level because law enforcement doesn't understand how to enjoy a healthy work-life balance. But one thing they do understand is personal space. I simply walk into the Johnson family home and they respect my privacy. It's time to take the big girl down. It's time for smoke. All right, let's roll. Johnson brothers finna take that fat fool down. The man who betrayed Grove Street families is about to meet his end. As we're approaching his crack den, I notice there's a strip club here that I forgot about and it would be rude not to pop in. I tell Sweet I'll BRB and get ready for what could potentially be the best experience of my entire life. Wow, this is TikTok dancing in a nutshell right here. Anyway, this girl isn't my type, I'm much more into this girl. Look at that shirt all buttoned up and the black vest, so conservative it's hot. She reminds me of my ex I killed. Not the one I just killed, the one I killed about three episodes ago. Why have I killed so many of my girlfriends? It's getting a bit excessive. And now though, it's time for smoke. The Johnson brothers finally rolling in together again. 
And then CJ says he wants to do this alone. And Sweet says, okay, he'll wait for me in the car. I was being polite. You're actually going to wait in the car? I'm not your mum going into the shops to quickly grab a loaf of bread. We're about to fight our biggest and strongest enemy and you're just going to sit here and vibe in the car? And can't you bowlers see we're having a private family moment here? Show some respect. All right, it looks like it's just me then. I need to steal this armored SWAT tank so I can use it to ram the wall down and access the crack den. You might be wondering what the gun on top is. A 50 caliber mounted machine gun? Nope, it's better. It's a water cannon. Hydrate or dihydrate, big girls. You're getting a little soaking tonight. I managed to ram through, and then I noticed two people who are showing why you shouldn't become addicted to narcotics. Fortunately, it's nothing a little water can't fix, and now look at them. Ready for church. I make my way through Smoke's crack den, and he has everybody working for him. He's got the ballers, the Vargos, some of the police force, it's insane. I know he backstabbed us, but the man sure knows how to flex his wealth, you can't deny it. And check out this giant statue of himself. Perhaps a little narcissistic, but it's extremely lifelike, almost photorealistic. He's even got a private strip club in here, but this girl is awful at dancing too. If you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. This is how you dance sexy, and sorry to my viewers for dancing so provocatively. After fighting my way to the penthouse suite, I reach Smoke. Hey, Smoke! Hey, CJ, I was wondering if you would show up. How'd you know it was me? Ah, my dude, you literally just said, hey, Smoke, and he's known you for years and could easily recognize your voice. Thank God you're a good pole dancer, or I don't think you'd be going places. Smoke pulls out a shotgun and the fight is on. This is a satisfying moment as this man betrayed us all for money. I know I'm meant to be shooting him right now, but check this huge trampoline out. Imagine the double bounces you could do on this bad boy. Damn, maybe I should betray my friends and sell more drugs. He flicks the lights off, but I have a secret weapon. 1300 grenades, which I start throwing everywhere, and this results in a lot of self-inflicted pain, and I learn a valuable life hack. Don't throw grenades in a small, poorly lit room. Eventually, I finish him off with my M4 and ask why he betrayed his lifelong friends, and he says because he wanted to get rich. Appreciate the honesty there, champion. Carl Johnson, my man. Tenpenny then arrives to kill me and take all Smoke's money. He proceeds to implausibly miss both of his combat shotgun blasts despite being two meters away, which is, well, it's pretty great. He attempts to flee in a fire truck as half the police force is out looking for him and Sweet picks this exact moment to get involved. I guess thanks for finally doing something, but I mean, I am just safely following him in this car with a seatbelt on. I'm not entirely sure what you dangerously hanging on like that is achieving, but great energy. Sweet leaps onto my sports car, and then after one of gaming's most iconic chase scenes, Ten Penny accidentally steers the truck off a bridge, crashing into the sewer below, suffering fatal injuries. As far as storylines go, this is top shelf. CJ has proved to his brother he's focused on the gang again, and they defeated their two biggest threats. See you around, officer. I guess the biggest lesson to be learned from this game is that if you sell enough crack, you could build a giant statue of yourself and have a private strip club. So I guess get out there and start pushing product, lads and lasses. A lot of you requested I make a GTA San Andreas playlist, so all 10 videos are now nicely organized in the playlist section. Again, I just appreciate the support on my content so much and look forward to making many more videos for you to hopefully enjoy. You guys are such legends. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.